Hey, what's going on guys? Hope you all had a great week. Topic of this week's video is gonna be how to write better code and this is in the realm of software engineering. Remember that software engineering is slightly in a different realm than just learning a pure language. One is kind of just learning the syntax and grammar of a language and software engineers really putting it to good use. Okay, so the first thing that we should do is just define what makes good software. Good is good, bad is bad. You usually know it, you have a gut feeling, you just see a piece of code and you're like, oh, that's not good. It's usually a little easier to judge a whole system or a whole project rather than a few lines of code. But still, if you see someone write a couple crappy lines of code, you can still call them out, all right? But when we judge good for good, we're gonna judge a whole system. The definition of a good project or a good system is more or less pretty simple. It's gonna be good if it's easy to understand and it's easy to change, like two big things. The flip side of that is also really easy for us to judge bad systems. If it's difficult to understand, it's also very complicated to update and also it's very prone to break, it's probably a bad system or a bad piece of code. Not only do we have to learn how to write really good code and good systems, but another piece of that puzzle is also getting this kind of sense, this kind of sixth sense to smell out bad code and what that means. This video is gonna focus on where to spot the bad pieces of your system, and I have three areas to go over. So let's just get started. The first thing that we should all watch out for in our system is this concept of being overloaded and some of you may have heard of things like function overloading but what i'm talking about here when i say overload is just a really general concept so let's just walk through it this usually manifests itself in like a word this word means something here but it means something completely different there and the same exact word means something even different in another place so that's kind of the concept of overloaded something taking on a lot of different meanings while you're designing your software system and you start to realize that the same word is starting to have multiple meanings in different places, it's time to be a little careful. There are a couple of really general words that you can use for anything like a controller or a layer. All these really general concepts or words that we can just tag onto anything, we have to be really, really careful not to overload them. This whole thing also goes into a deeper context of naming things well when you're writing your code, and it's really, really important to try to name things as best you can. Really, when you're programming, you can name anything, anything, but usually we'll know when it's a crappy name, so just try to avoid that. Point number two to watch out for bad code is to be really, really careful about your dependencies. If possible, your dependency should always be singular direction dependencies. So what do we mean by this? Let's say we have a kitchen class and the kitchen class is dependent on a dishwasher class. As long as the dishwasher doesn't also depend on the kitchen, this is a one directional dependency. The kitchen class is just using the dishwasher, but the dishwasher doesn't really care, right? Anyone could use it. It doesn't have to be a kitchen. So these one directional dependencies are the easiest to manage in your code it's impossible to always have singular direction dependencies, but you should try to have as many of them as possible. The moment you have dependencies going in multiple direction, things get much more complicated and potentially much more convoluted. Bidirectional dependencies is when some entity depends on another entity, and this one also depends on this one. So they have to exist together, even though they're separate. The number one reason why some systems are hard to update. This is actually the number one reason why systems are hard to update, but those reasons are convoluted dependencies. You think something's actually really easy to change. Turns out there's 900 dependencies for that change. It's not so easy to update anymore, is it? So I said a lot for that point, but major takeaway of point number two is to really watch how you organize your dependencies and strive for singular direction dependencies. All right, so that was point number two. My third and last point about watching out for bad code is to always keep 
your organization in check. My number one pet peeve, or probably maybe number three out of five in my personal pet peeves is when I see a file in the directory that shouldn't be there, or I see a directory structure that actually makes no sense and represents a developer being too lazy. But when I, think, when I see things that aren't organized very well, it's really, really annoying. The thing that we always have to remember about code, project, or system organization is that you cannot design the perfect organization on day one. So I'm not a soothsayer, you're not a fortune teller, none of us are like clairvoyant in any way. So we don't know the perfect way to organize a project from the start. And once we add features, you know, add, delete, re-architect things, the organization has to be an iterative thing. It has to keep changing and improving. If a file is in the wrong place or your directory structure isn't generalized enough, you should just fix it right away when it starts to not make sense. The same basic idea also goes for coding. Not only do files and directories have to be organized, but the code also has to be organized down to the lines. So everything from lines of code to software architecture to directory structure to how your project is packaged, everything has to iteratively improve its organization as you start changing your project. So my last and final point, this third point, is to always keep your organization in check. And you know, once you see someone else's code or project, you can immediately tell how clear they were thinking or how much they actually cared if it was actually an organized project. All right guys, that's the end of the video. This is just three things to watch out for when you're designing your code or you're working on some of your projects. Remember that writing good code is equal parts knowing good patterns and designs as well as knowing when things are kind of going wrong. All right, so let's just review all those bad things to watch out for when you're coding. The first thing was making sure the names and concepts you use don't become overloaded. Everything has a unique and descriptive meaning, all right? Don't have one thing mean 10 different things. Second point was watch your dependencies. Dependencies are the easiest way to make your project difficult to update, so always make your dependencies really clear and singular direction if you can. Third and final point was just organization. Don't wanna talk about this too much, but you'll know when something is organized or it's not, okay? Organization. All right, guys, those are just three tips I had about writing better code. Not just writing better lines of code, but making sure the whole system and project work well, okay? No one cares if you write a few bad lines of code, except maybe, you know, that asshole project partner you had in school, he'll probably care if you wrote some shitty lines of code, but as long as the system works well, everyone's gonna be super happy, all right? Hope this was good. Hope you all have a great week and I'll see everyone next time.